Hello and welcome to the On Spirit podcast, where we inspire you to develop and enhance your entrepreneurial talents and skills. This series is packed full of information, tips and interviews that help you change and find the edge in your game. I'm your host, Beju Solanke. I'm a performance psychologist and I've been working with entrepreneurs and business owners for the last 25 years, helping them improve their game. To find out more information about me, please look on all social media platforms, but specifically Clubhouse and Instagram. Before we launch this week's episode, I'd love to tell you about the Change Your Game Scorecard. If you're struggling to achieve what you really want and you're not sure where to start, the Change Your Game Scorecard will help you identify where you need to improve. Life is a game and there are three core games you need to conquer to succeed in life. That's the inner game, your mindset, your emotions, your thoughts, your game plan, that's your strategy and your roadmap, and then your outer game, how consistent and persistent you are in taking actions. The Change Your Game Scorecard will help you identify how strong you are in each of those games. Please visit changeyourgamescorecard.com for more information and get your report today. Thank you for listening. Hi, and welcome to the next On Spirit podcast. Delighted to have a friend of mine, Jamie Lewis. How are you doing, Jamie? Very well, very well. Thank you for having me on. Not a problem. Much appreciated. Not a problem, not a problem. So I'm really fascinated about your journey because I think your own admission, it wasn't this sort of big plan to be this entrepreneur and big empire. It sort of happened. Some by accident, yeah, yeah. some by design. Yeah, I think, um, I think accident is, um, is, is really valid, totally valid, in fact. Um, so, yeah, I... Uh, I absolutely would go with that. So, Jamie, really quickly, there's a lot of feedback. Where are it's coming from? What's that? Right. Actually, I'm about to start again. There's a lot of feedback here. Hang on, hang on. It's my yeah. fault. It's my fault. No, my fault. Hang on, hang on. It is my fault. Hang on. Talk now. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, we've got to start again. Okay. Okay. Start again. Shall I stop this? No, no, no. You can't. Leave it, leave it, leave it. We'll let it sit. That's fine. Leave it. That's fine. He knows. Okay. Hi, delighted to welcome good friend of mine and fellow entrepreneur, Jamie Lewis. How are you doing, Jamie? Very well, very well. Thank you for having me on. Much appreciated. No problem. No problem. Now, we know, we know each other from social, cricket, football, bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, you run your own business, which we'll talk about in a moment. But fascinating to hear about your journey because you had no plan to be this entrepreneur, be running the empire it sort of just happened by accident is that right yeah that is exactly what has happened it was all just a complete accident to be fair right. so uh, yeah and, and, and i think there's a lot of lessons to be learned here because on spirit podcast is all about uh, understanding there's no one way to achieve success or grow, run a business um people have this perception especially those who may not have run a business that you need this business plan and, and forecast and everything right so otherwise you're setting yourself for failure but in the real world, it doesn't work like that. Um, now, you started off as a mortgage broker. Was it just a mortgage broker working for an organisation? Was that your first? No, well, no. Uh, I, I think um, I think when when I, when I started, um, I I was in property. So I started I started the whole the whole thing in property in the state agency, and then moved into um, into the financial side of it uh, after a. a a period of travelling. Uh, I like to call it soul searching, but it was just good fun, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, and then moved into the financial side from there. So I was about uh, 22 years old when I when I moved into the financial side. So yeah, that was that was sort of the, the start of the journey, if you like. In, in so, so it was basically helping people being a mortgage broker, helping people get mortgages. Yeah, like like uh, it was it, uh, because I'd come from an estate agency background. I'd always been involved in that side, and I that we had a mortgage broker who sort of sat at the back of the office, and he would help you know uh, individuals, first time buyers, families, etc., just just obtain a mortgage to go and buy their, their new house. So that was that was where I started. That's what I knew. So I replicated what I knew, and I, I always thought oh, those guys are cool. And they used to sit at the back of the office. I thought, oh, that's even cooler because I sat right at the front. Mm. Um, so that was me. I, I, I thought that would be my, my my direction, and I wanted to help people, and I wanted to be, I suppose, thought of in a slightly better be, better vein than than an estate agent. And basically, yeah. everybody hated me, and I thought, well, I don't really want to be hated. I can't oh, like so. And, right. So I went down that route. So, and yeah. you realise that when you in entrepreneurship, the last thing you can want want to be is being liked. Yeah, it's anyway. awful. You definitely don't want that. You've got oh, to no. keep that away from everything. No, oh, it's no. you know. Yeah, that's, that's so, it. So being a broker, this, this, I also talk about with business owners that uh, there's two skill sets. There's the skill set of the thing that you actually do. 
i.e. Yeah. for you to be a mortgage broker, how to you know, understand people's finances, can they afford it and what they need and all that. That's one skill set to do the actual service. Yeah. And the other skill set of actually how you grow a business. Yeah. So when you first started off, were, were you literally a sole broker and leads were coming in through the estate entry? Yeah, yeah, that was that was literally it. So, um, I, I mean, I worked for a number of big firms. So, um, so that was that was how it started. And um, and yeah, it was just it was just see these individuals. You know, I might see a, an investment a investor guy, and that was sort of that was okay. Or I'd see a family uh, or a first time buyer, you know, a young couple. Actually, first time buyers back when in the day when I started, there might be just one single person. You often don't see that anymore. Um, but I, I quite often, interestingly, on that point of, you know, uh, you know, broking as a mortgage broker, I wasn't the best. In fact, I would say I was pretty mediocre. I mean, I, I dived into people's lives and I tried to do all I could, but uh, I wasn't the best mortgage broker. I was good in the high net worth space. I was quite good with investors. I was okay with first time buyers, but there were far better mortgage brokers than me. Um, which was interesting because as a mortgage broker, I definitely have people who work with me now who are far better than I ever was, but they couldn't run a business. So that, mm. it's interesting that there were those two different sets. I think that's been a massive part of my journey and my learn actually was that as soon as I put the ego to one side of I was never going to be the greatest mortgage broker, the rest of it just flew and it was, it was fine. So, that's an yeah. interesting distinction you make there because it's very easy. If you ha uh, have a self-awareness that you're not good at the job, the tendency is there to find something you're good at. Like, oh, let me do something else. Let me become a strategist or let me do a financial or whatever it is. But what you but you knew the area and you saw the distinction between being a great mortgage broker and where you self-confessed probably a competent mortgage broker yeah. in certain areas, but potentially the eye for business was better. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think training, so teaching, teaching guys how to be the best they can be was probably my... That was probably the value that I could bring, and that's hopefully what I've been able to deliver mm. to these guys um, and continue to do so is just to help them to achieve the dreams that they want to achieve through being the best that they can be, which is why we've got so many, you know. Yeah. Here. So early on, how did you make that change? What did you do? How did you realize that? And in, did you, so think, you leave where you were, start a business? How did you? Do yeah, that? I think I, I went. I went really quickly. So for, with every business that I was involved in, as an estate agent, I went on to a management training program at the age of nineteen, which was unheard of. So I was starting to understand this, the management, you know, how to deal with people. Um, and then, and then when I I went to the mortgage side. For the first three or four years, I was a mortgage broker and I was successful. I'm not saying I wasn't a successful broker, I was good, um, but I was average. Um, and then when I went to work for myself um, in 2007, um, and I opened my own business, so I'd been in there from 2002 to 2007, as a, you know, working for various big companies, and I'd actually got to a stage where I was managing a team of estate agency brokers, but while still doing the job as well. And then... Yeah, I started my own business in 2007 and I sat by myself basically until about 2013. That was basically the time that I sat by myself and and then, then obviously so I you, started. So you, you're there. essentially a sole trader between 2007 and 2013? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Okay. And during that time, how did you grow your business? What did you do? Well, it was it was obviously mortgages, if anybody, and some people on this may not, may not remember, but it was, a pretty, um, it was a pretty traumatic time through 2007 to 2012, um, in, in as much as we had the financial crisis, uh, a global financial crisis. So, yeah, my, my world just spun on, it, on its head. So my idea was to grow. That was always my plan. I wanted to build numbers and I wanted to get some people in and around me. How I was going to do that, I had no plan. There was no big picture. There was no, you know, it was just, you know, deal with what I had coming in. Um, what I had to do, actually, was I had to retrain at that point and bring in a, a, a secondary income. So what I did was there was um, energy assessments that were being done through, for houses at that time, home information packs. So I retrained as an energy assessor because I could shoe it in next to my business um, and, and, and provide some income, which is all that I needed to keep my business going. Um, so that's that's what I did. Um, so yeah, there was no, it was literally growth was staying in business throughout okay. those years, which you know. So, so the hard. lesson there is whatever occurred outside, you said, well, we've got to find a way. Yeah, and you found a way. It's related I, to I, what you did, but not directly. 
Yeah, yeah, and it was brilliant actually from a knowledge point of view because now mortgages are so reliant. A lot of the stuff we do now, um, lenders won't touch a property if the if there was a risk on energy. They want you know they'll only take mortgages of an E and above. So there's actually a load of crossover there. I, I explain that period to a lot of the people that I ever talk to about it as um, if you've ever seen the film um, Forrest Gump, which I know is a strange analogy, but if you look at the film and you watch it, there was a period where the shrimp boat, he was a shrimp boat captain and he was going out with his, with his compadre and, uh, and they couldn't catch any shrimp for love nor money. And then one day there was a massive storm and after that it wrecked because all the other boats were in the harbour and they were still out at sea trying to catch these, these, these shrimp. Um, there was, you know, all these other boats were inshore. What happened was massive storm came in, wiped every other boat out and suddenly he became the best shrimp boat captain that there, that there was. Um, and, and essentially what happened was he cleaned up. And I often say that my, that period, what happened in that period was all of the businesses went to, the, uh, loads of businesses were poorly run, had nothing behind them, didn't, didn't do anything right, or didn't do enough right. And there was just no mortgage brokers left. So it meant that I was able to come in and just, you know, uh, take, take my business to, for, from what I dreamed it could be to actually what, 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 it, what it can be. Because you is. pivoted around doing these uh, energy around, assessments. Around the negative and, mm. then, and then just took it forward. So, yeah. And in hindsight, was that planned or was it like a little bit of, oh, okay. Yeah. With, was, the, with was, the flow and it started it working out. It was survival. Out. It was like pure survival instinct, I think. Um, did you have any, but, did you feel at any point, I want to be a broker, do my own thing, financial crisis, Right, let me do another game. Let me go into completely something different. Not once. Was that because you thought, I didn't know how to, or you thought, no, no, I want to crack this? I just, I, just, I don't, I, 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 the failure just, I can't have failure. I know it happens, and I know there are lots of business owners out there, but if it meant that it reeled back to me sitting in a chair doing the job again, I'd do it all again if it meant that it all remained as, as, as was. Uh, so no, it just, it just didn't, it, I don't, a lot of brokers left, you know, the, 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 the industry was scattered with people who'd left. And actually now we have brokers who, and the very, the story that I get is, I was doing it up until about 2009 and then I left the industry and now I'm coming back in. Mm. So that, you know, my, a lot of the CVs I now see are people who are doing that. So a lot of people left. So when you look at that period of your life, up to the point of when you started the mortgage business again, what do you, yeah. what do you think you learned about yourself? Um, that I'm stubborn, uh, and uh, and uh, but also that I'm resilient, and uh, and I would work, uh, you know, I would work tirelessly. There would be nothing that would get in my way from you know, you know, whatever it took would be the the, the what I would do to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. Um, whether that's right or wrong, I think now as I look back and having a bit more of a plan and I was so young and, you know, so much has changed in those years. It was probably a bit bullish, really, and probably if a business looked at it or, you know, a clever business person looked at what I was doing, then they'd say, what are you doing? You're mad, clinging on to it. Why don't you just, you know, let it go and just do something else? Because I could have done and probably been successful and, and, and I would have, you know, done okay. I could have, you know, changed my, having changed said my that, path. Having said that, someone's listening is thinking, They've got an idea of a business, especially in the times we are living in now. What advice would you give them? I, I, I mean, a hundred percent, I would do it if you've got something that um, that that is, you know, is a viable business and you can monetize it. I would, I would change the way I did things probably, and I would look at, I, I would drill down on the numbers a little bit more. I, you know, I, I, I didn't ever do that. I never looked at what that bigger picture was. Um, but I would say 100% go for it. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing that should hold you back. Mm -hmm. If it's a, a feasible business, you're well supported. You know, I think a lot of my success I put down to the fact that I was supported throughout by my family, my, my wife, um, because I, I wouldn't have achieved what, mm -hmm. what I've got today without her. Um, so, yeah, I think you've got to just look at it. There's a big picture to look at, but as long as all of those dots line up, or even if you can get most of the dots to line up, then absolutely there should be nothing yeah. else. So 2017, you, 2017 was it, or 2013? 2000, when I went into business. Back yeah. into back into. So, yeah, um, yeah, so, I, I mean, I, I started, so I was on my own. I was running a small company um, 
uh, called Lime Financial Management. And uh, one of the guys who had left, so the previous business I'd worked at where I was a manager of a team, I'd gone in 2007. He, uh, another guy who worked there, the business went to the wall, actually. So that was one of the ones that got caught up in the storm. Uh, and that business was a big business, 150 staff, something like that, in, locally in sort of Essex. And um, that went to the wall. And one of the guys who worked there, who I'd known for many years, actually gave me my first job in the state agency. I'd then become a broker himself. He left and has started his own business. We talked in 2009 and I said, no, it's not the right time for me. I want to be on my own. I'm just, I had my energy assessments. and I just, it wasn't right for me at that time. And then in 2012, what was happening was we were getting busy. The market was turning. It was starting to go again. And, um, and he sort of approached me and he said, look, I'm not getting a holiday. I don't, you know, I don't have any time off. I take all my cases you know, away with me. And, I, you know, because it's a very, it's a, you know, it's a crucial thing that we're dealing with. Uh, in mortgages and I said oh my god I'm doing I'm doing the same thing like, I just never have a break from this thing so he said well look why don't we you know just sit in a room together and at least when I go away you can look after my case and when you go away you can look after yours mm. I had my third baby on the way by that point I was like do you know what I, now's the time I'm gonna do it now is the right time so yeah that was in 2012 so um Affinity was formed, me, him, a broom cupboard in Hadley, uh, and it was just all about just having a holiday. That was literally the simplest of reasons to start a business without any, you know, just do what we were doing and have a holiday. And when you started that, did you have plans or did you say, well, let's just do it each day just to serve clients to see where it takes us? Yeah, I think that was it. And what did it start to become? Because now you've got a company that's got over sort of 30 people working for you in different areas, which we'll talk yeah. about later. But how did it start becoming whereby, well, hang on, I'm going to be more of a business owner now and not a broker? So I think, I think that, that probably happened a couple of years later. So it started, to, it started to grow. We started to get busier. We added a couple of part-time brokers in the mix. And, um, you know, it started to become more of a, all right, well, we've got a lot of cases. We're doing a lot of mortgages now. I mean... A few other estate agents would get in touch with us and say, listen, you've, you've run you know, a few of our cases for us and you've done the mortgages. You, you guys seem to know what you're doing. And we were like, yeah, we sort of vaguely do. And actually, John, John who was my business partner, was, um, he, was, he was a good broker. You know, he's very, very single-minded. He would you know, he's, he's, he'd do things in such a way. It was different to me, but I learned a lot from the way he did things, even me, because I never really sat with another broker. I'd always had my own way of doing it. Right. So I learned a lot from that, um, albeit there were some negatives that they brought to the table as well, but you know, we'll talk about that in a bit, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, and then, so I reckon probably a couple of years later, when, it, when, we start, when the phone started to ring saying, we, can we use you? Because as a business owner, you know, when somebody picks the phone up and says, we really want to use your services, that's when me, I was sort of sit, sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, this is incredible, like, people are actually hearing about us, and we've got, we've got a thing here, we've got a real you know, yeah. thing. So, um, yeah, that was probably the moment. So around about 2014, anyway. And then, whoa, what? Okay. I've got a massive echo. Can you hear an echo? Okay, hang on. No. Why is there an echo? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yep. can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? I've got a massive echo on my voice. Hang on, it's alright. We'll just I'll just sort that out. And we can don't pause the recording. We can edit it out. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay, that should be alright. Does that work for you? Does that work? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so now two, three years in, you started thinking actually more of a business owner, you're getting leads coming in. Did you then start to put different practices in place to formalize and operationally get the business in a better order? It was, um, it was, it was the time where uh, admin administration of our cases started to, started to come to the fore. So then it was about, it was a change because I was setting up a process. We were setting up, you know, what this looked like in the background and getting support around us to allow us to continue to go forward and write more business. So 
Yeah, that was it. Was it, it again? You know, you look back. I, 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 this is the first time I've ever really looked back properly on on a lot of this stuff and, and actually thought about it. But yeah, and looking back now with that question being asked, yeah, that was it. Was uh, yeah, all of those things were just part of the process. And I think it still develops today. You know, I don't think I'm finished by any means, but you know that that just putting those initial things in place of what does it look like passing a case from here to here. You know, it, it was something completely different mm. for us. So yeah, really. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that is a really funny time to sort of yeah, but yeah, absolutely. We were we were putting processes in place. Uh, we moved an office um, because we were you know we were literally in a broom cupboard um, that I painted, put the floor down, cut chucked some desks in, and like, we were like, wow, it's the mate. Put a sign on the wall. We're like, this is it. We're running a business. This is us. We're like, and then we got a shop front. You know, so that was a whole change in itself. And, something we professionalised. We had a phone but before we had two BT phones that were wireless that we it's for you and that would be we pass it over and that was it. Suddenly we had a phone system and there were all these just different yeah. things that we were suddenly putting in place. So um yeah, interesting. Yeah, but yes, absolutely loads of processes. So, so so from the outside it looks like you're growing, you've got a shop front now, you're getting income phone calls, it looks like everything's really good. What do people don't see? What are people not seeing that <sighs> well, are integral in terms of when you're coming up with challenges and growing the business, I think um, I think uh, there was there's an analogy of duck, of duck swimming, isn't it? That I think uh, so many so many different people in business have used, and that that is it. You know, you are doing everything as a business owner. The buck stops with you. Mm. That could be that the bins need putting out. The te- that's, there's not enough tea in there. The toilet, the health and safety, the alarm, the phone's gone wrong. The IT is not right. Computer's not working. That, that all of that stuff ends back at your desk, and then once all of that stuff that can come in at any stage comes in, you've still got a job to do for a client. Um, which is in, in my industry specifically. I don't, you know, other industries have maybe more time or whatever to react to certain things. But in my industry, a mortgage mortgage day, I say it often in here, it's really boring. I probably bore them with it, but mortgage days today. You know, if someone's picked the phone up and they're looking for it, you know, today is the day they want to get something sorted and, and you've got to react quickly to that. And so that was always the vibe. That it was the same back when I was doing it, you know, on a day-to-day basis, sitting behind the desk sort of trying to do it myself. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the stuff that can come in. Um, staff, <laughs> um, you know, uh, choosing staff. I mean, uh, you know, having now worked with you for a few years now, the way that you made me value what our values were as a business and look at um you know the sort of people who fit that was the key to the conversation that you you sort of pressed upon me and, and that's so right i've done it without knowing it probably for many years um but actually putting something down and saying Do you know what this is this is the member of staff for us you know they, they're the that's the guy you know he's got you know this that the other going through him she, she's you know amazing she blows my mind this is incredible um and, and so that was that's been a massive part. Um, the other thing, obviously, is the business partner, um, which uh, you know, make sure that if you do go into business with another person, I'm not against it. I know there's I know a few people who've done brilliantly out of going into business with other people. You need other people around you. You go mad otherwise. But make sure you're on the same trajectory um, mm. because that. Just going on on employing staff. When you think about either taking on a staff member, a partner, whatever you want to call it. What's more important, their skill set, their attitude, or their, their, their fit for the job? What, what, what is it a combination of all three? I, uh, what, where, where would you say is most important for you? Yeah, I, I think um, I think I think it is a combination. It, it would have to it would have to be that. But to me, attitude is everything. Um, you know, I, 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 I talk um, you know about my my early path. Um, I left school at sixteen. I had nothing. Uh, you know, no qualifications. I went to college for six months. You know, flunked out of that uh, after going to boarding school as in my in my youth, and then having this sort of reasonably privileged upbringing, going to a grammar school. You know, past my eleven plus, whatever, whatever. Um, so then, going from that into a working environment where I felt like I had to prove myself all the time, um, it was. It was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm always on this thing where I'm going to prove everybody wrong mm. that I wasn't that bad, you know, that bad kid who just failed everything. So I was more than that. Um, so to me, the people that I brought in 
attitude means everything. The person, the person is the most important bit. You know, what's the, the fire inside? You know, what, what, what's it going to take for you to, to do what you want to do? So to me, that's important. Um, a little birdie tells me that he could have been a professional footballer. Well, yeah, is the story around that linked to your drive? Yeah, maybe. Um, I think, I think, I think I, uh, I, I probably had some skills around, you know, maybe, uh, when I, when I was younger, I mean, I was a, I was a sportsman in general, you know, I played cricket with you, uh, my golf, I'm, you know, I love my golf. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I just love sport. I love it. I love everything it brings and all of the team stuff and everything. So, um, I think, Unfortunately, I was a bit of a tug of war between two divorced parents, and I and I that that stayed with me really. It probably still remains with me today, realistically, in a lot of, a lot of the moves I made. Um, and it was a power struggle between the two. One, my father was very affluent, wanted this you know high life, Bentleys, helicopters, whatever, whatever, like just completely different world than I was actually living in. Which you know, uh, my youth was spent with my mum, and we had basically nothing. You know, we had nothing. Really. Mm. They, they divorce so um this is weird two worlds and i think um probably because of that my mum had nothing she was working every single day i would play football I, I could have done well i could have been a good cricketer i think you know there could have been a future in cricket as well i don't know what way i would have gone but you know with a father figure and maybe something around you, you could possibly make more of a thing but i was just left to my own devices and that's probably the reason that i walked away from school with nothing because i wasn't a mm. super person uh but when you look back, you know, the way, I suppose, it's just having that person, isn't it, who says, do you know what, you can do something here. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I regret not playing football younger. It was my love. It was my great passion until I finished at 35. And I played at good level, but never, never got back through. So. And do you think that contributed to how driven you are now and how you 100%. deal with failures and, you know, challenges at the moment? 100%. 100%. And I don't think you need it. I don't think you need my story to, to, to go and do this. So for anybody who's looking at it going, well, I forgot that story, everything was lovely for me. I don't believe that, but I do believe that the fire it's given me has been the thing that's propelled me forward and mm -hmm. continues on a daily basis to, to propel me forward. Because I just, I just, you know, I want, it's not about the, the, the you know, if it's about the riches and the this and the that, that's, that's all great. You know, that is great, but it's pretty superficial and you'll never end that, that, that chase. Mm -hmm. But if it's about something bigger, if it's about succeed, success and succeeding and proving, you know, always having to prove yourself, then I think I think that should give you enough. Mm. So, you now have a business that got you probably got about thirty more than thirty people working with you for you in different yeah. different self employed plus pay, payroll, but they're all part of the team. Um, what what's how is your role different now, running an organisation where you got thirty or people than before when it was you, a couple of people, and then an assistant yeah um how's my role different well it is different um it's more lateral um i would say that's probably a bit of a a bit of a strange word but so i'm i i i, I guess the best way of me is i hover above the business and um if you like i'm i'm noticing directions it's like hovering above a ship and then seeing leaks and trying to plug them mm. and then noticing the direction that it needs to go in and then and then and then hovering above that to, to take it in the right direction. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing I would say. So the day to days have all been a lot of it's been sort of, you know, dealt with and delegated mm. and you know, there are people who do things. So have you have you found it easy to let go of the the, my, no. what may some people may call below your pay grade day to day no. money <laughs> no and, and in fact I had a director's meeting I've been away for a week with my family last week and I came back uh, yesterday and we had a director's meeting for probably about an hour and they, they the two directors sat with me and said we've dealt with other stuff but we're not going to tell you what it is and I just went oh <laughs> oh no what was it what's the other stuff they went, we're not gonna tell. and it was just so that you know it's part of and they need that as well. Um, so yeah, uh, was yeah below my pay grade. I don't think, for me personally, I don't ever feel like anything will ever be but because of where I've come from. I'll make a cup of tea. I'll put the beans out. Yeah, I'll, but below my pay because a cup of tea, done. I think. Yeah, I, I get where I'm trying to make it. Making a cup of tea is probably right on your pay grade because it builds that rapport. When I go below your pay grade, it's about well, are you using your time as a business owner and an inspirer and a motivator? Yeah. 
yeah. to your best ability. And sometimes making the cup of tea for the staff is a good thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. I suppose, yeah, you, you, you're right. Um, and um, it, it has been hard to let go. That's been yeah. the hardest thing, the hardest thing for me to understand. And I think, you know, from our early days, you mm. have always pressed upon me that the importance of that. You never did it cricket, but you did, you did it at work. So that was good. <laughs> um, uh, we won't uh, go into that. That's a different podcast. No, 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 fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, in fact, I'm sure I did a running for you for many years, like a few years. Definitely. Won't anyway. go there. Won't go there. Um, uh, but yeah, no, so, um, so yeah, I, I, it's definitely been the hardest thing. And, mm. and it's something that I think, especially when you've grown something, it's like a baby, isn't it? You know, it's like a parent stepping away from certain tasks. You're not stepping away from everything. Mm. You understand that. What was the reaction to your family and friends when you started really going beyond just being a one? Because the thing is, when you're a one man band or maybe someone, people still think you've got a job, right? They don't see it. But when you start to employ people, you start to create structure, you have a shop front in your case. And hang on, there's the, the name of the business becomes um, synonymous with you. Then I realize, oh, there's an entity here. Yeah. What was the reaction of your family and friends? Was it supportive? Were they saying, "Well, are you sure you're taking a risk?" What was the reaction there? I think I think my my dad, who sadly isn't with me anymore, but he was he just because weirdly he'd been on this weird journey himself. I mean, he'd he'd sort of come down, uh, you know, because he'd gone bankrupt and whatever else. So it was incredible. He had an incredible life himself, but. Um, he was my biggest supporter. He would just be, you know, so on this, whilst the journey was going up, he was just, he was just so proud. And I think my mum, less so, and probably she doesn't even know where I am today. She hasn't been into the new office yet. But, um, but my dad, 100%. So I carry that with me um, a lot uh, about the support that he gave me. Um, my my little sister works here and is a director here so she's one of the and she's always been a huge supporter as i am of her also but my wife and probably less my kids because they're younger but my wife certainly has just been um uh, you know in, uh, behind me literally at every stage mm. whilst i've been up at night she's come down and talked to me uh, with the cups of tea at three o'clock in the morning and she's you know mm. she's been there you know on the ride and helping me with this place and mm. you know so yeah you know, they've been great. Um, my feet are on the floor. You know, it's great. I don't think I'm the finished article by any means. And I think there's still so much for me to do. Um, but it's a really exciting place. It's a really exciting place. Apart from your children and your wife and your family, what are you most proud of? Um, I'm proud in, of giving in your these journey, guys. In, in yeah, your journey. I, think, I, think, I think I'm proudest of giving the guys that I'm giving a chance to be successful, be successful. Um, you know, they're, they're maybe they've been overlooked with some of these guys in the past and uh, they wouldn't be sitting in this environment if it, if it wasn't for me. Um, and so that makes me really proud is that the guys that I've got around me are, they're, they're grateful, they're driven, they've got, we've built this thing together. It's the way that we want it to be. And um, so it's, I'm most proud of that, without a doubt. And, and we, there's a lot of apprentices. My, my business is littered with apprentices who are now in formal roles. Um, yeah. So that, that makes me very proud as well. So. When you think of, um, we're recording this during this sort of pandemic lockdown period, and you know, this podcast can be listened to by at any time, but the one unique thing about this situation is that everybody in the world has been affected by it, some more yeah. positive and more negative than others. Two questions. First question is, what has that period given you in, as a person? Yeah. Um, so, so I mean, again, it was a, a totally different to the first time that, because you know, it's a completely different thing, but it, it financial crunch, crisis type scenario. Um, so, yeah, I, again, just given me that, it's given me, if you like, it sort of slapped me around the face a little bit because we were, we were doing so well before that period. It was like, you know, it was just seemingly we were we were right on the cusp of the of the oh my goodness, this is gonna get amazing really quickly. Um and it just sort of plummeted. So it was a bit of a oh actually, right, you you know, you're nowhere near. You you know, you're nowhere near where you want to be. So that was brilliant from that respect. It clicked my wings again. Because I think sometimes you can run away with it with the mm. ideas of grandeur and, mm. and that that was brilliant. So for me personally, I guess on the answer to that question, it clipped my wings and sat me around the face and said, right, you're not, you're, you're nothing mm. yet. Carry on. You, mm. you know, you've got a long way to go. So, uh, What do you think 
uh, post this period where the world is looking like, both from your industry point of view and generically for business? Yeah, I think I think I think we've got a lot to to um, be excited about. I think I think business will be done in a wholly different way um, for us in our environment. But even this, the things that I want and require um, as a family, you know, family, whatever. Um, so I think I think there will be more more things done at distance. I don't think we'll apologise for that, which I think is great. Um, and I think we'll urge people to 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 de to deliver service and certainly service in our product is different, but product, you know, but service certainly in a, in a more sort of, you know, transient manner, if you like, so but further apart, distance, etc. cetera, um, which I think is going to be great. I think we need to be careful that we don't lose interaction completely, being, being perfectly honest. I know we do interact like this, but, mm. you know, seeing, feeling, touching, shaking someone's hand, you know, there, there's something lovely about that and, and getting a reaction, you know, face to face in front of someone digging with it down and then is, is a good thing. Um, but I, I think actually, structurally, and certainly in my industry, um, I think people are going to choose a different way because, so, you know, for example, a lot of London type businesses, we've got, we've got an Essex base, we've got a London, a Liverpool Street um, sort of headquarters. And a lot of the clients that we deal with up there are like, well, you know, we'll do it over Zoom. It's better for us um, because we're not in London now. We're working four days at home. We're going to the city one day a week. So the home that they were at before, the, the, the interesting thing for us dealing with people was it was all about convenience. How quickly to the station, how quickly to London, how quickly the other end. Convenience has gone out the window a little bit now because now it's how close to the beach, how much further out can I get? If I'm only travelling in one day a week, my life's going to look different. I'm going to... I'm going to choose, you know, can we get close to my kids' school? So, you know, or can we be close to a field or a park or a... So the, mm. the, the whole vibe of, you know, convenience around the cities and whatever else, I think may change entirely in the future, which personally, I think is a great thing because we should have been doing that all the time and, and mm. actually recognising that is, um, is, is, is powerful as well. So, you know, I think for all of us who are running at a million miles an hour and never noticing what was around us, it, it's been... Fantastic. It's, it's interesting you say that because um, the vibe um, in the world around corporate work is, is the perception of productivity will be reduced if you allow that flexibility. Now, re remote working in this full situation, if anything, productivity has gone up because you respect people's time, they understand it. And like you say, you might have an hour's meeting in Liverpool Street, but it's going to take three hours out of your day. Whereas now, you literally get on Zoom, you do what you need to do, and you can do the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I think it's going to be. Um, I think. I think it's going to be a. Um, yeah, a complete. A complete change, and it's going to take time. I don't think. And I think we will see it come back. You know, the city of London isn't going to suddenly close its doors, and you know, there's too much that drives people back. You know, GMT obviously with the, the financial markets, we, we we win on that because of our time zone. Um, so I do think things will drive back there. But mm. this this you know productivity hasn't gone down. I think mm. traders that I'm speaking to on the, on the, on the broker floors are saying, I just had the best quarter ever, sitting at home with three screens around my playroom and yeah. in a cupboard or, you know, I think space will be different, certainly in our world, mortgages and stuff like that. Developers will develop different types of property. Um, mm. I know I'm looking at, you know, a couple of bits at the moment myself and the way that my thinking is, is where are we going to put the desks? We need Wi-Fi mm. in every room. You know, it's a completely different, it's a total change of the environment because, you know, you could have five people on, on Wi-Fi at any moment. You need, you need good connection. You know, it's all about that. So, um, yeah, but, all, you know, a horrible situation, but looking at it, I think the world would be a better place because of it. Mm. Um, when it, when and it I think that's the consensus that no one, no one wants what happened. However, the, the result of it, overall, hopefully, would be better. It's a shame that you needed something like this. Yeah, I mean, that's the, it's the tragedy. It's the tragedy that's come around there. If you look at the financial crisis, there was. You know, I mean, obviously that that had its toll on people as well, without a doubt. Um, and um, but but actually, for the world have reacted at that point to what was happening and been a bit more entrepreneurial in terms of the spirit. Maybe even at that point, you would have seen more people come out and go, mm. "Hey, you know, this mm. is you know retracted and 
the skill sets were trans, tra, trans, you know, trans, transferable, um, yeah. and they all went into different industry. Mm. Then you know, come back and whatever. But you know, if that had been the mo the marker, we'd have been so much further forward by now. Um, they say so, that yeah. technologies move forward. Uh, uh, what would be our expectation of technology moving forward in two years? Happen in two months. Yeah. Acceleration of the use, okay. like Zoom and right on, understand. And me, people will be more comfortable with that, not thinking if I can't meet someone or create something, especially the events business, that business can't be done, it can be. Just got yeah. to think in a different way. Yeah. Before we finish, got one final question. It's been fascinating talking to you. Is what, what you, 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 you know, you're, you're on a cusp now of, of growing your business, you know, you're doing certain great things, you've got different strands. Is what do you want your legacy to be? What's the thing? What's Affinity and Jamie Lewis about? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, what would it be about? I suppose I'd, I'd like to be I'd like to be looked at at the end of all of this and just somebody go, do you know what he changed? He changed it. He did, he did what he said he was going to do. He, ch he changed the way that things were done. Um, so yeah, I think if that's my legacy, um, then then that would be that would be a, a great legacy to be part of. Um, and have been a nice person throughout. That's you know to me, my my morals, my ethics are. You know, I've always tried to do the right mm. things. We do a load of charity stuff. We worked out, actually, worked out yesterday. For the last two years, we've done a couple of charity events. I know you've been to one of them, thankfully. It was good. I don't know whether next year's will go ahead yet. We don't yeah. know. But, um, but we've raised nearly £50,000 over the last wow. two years in terms of our charitable work for local charities, which have been yeah. one mental health, one a bereavement suite at the hospital, which has been incredible. So, yeah, I just, I just want to have made a difference. I want to have made a mark. Um, mm. And, and for people to go, he, you know, he did it the right way. That, that's, yeah. that if, if I can finish like that, then that would be. From the outside, like I say, I've been working with you for, for a few, a couple of years now, and just looking from the outside, there's, there's, there's a lot to be thankful for. And I think you, know, you may not know this, but there is a lot of respect out there for what you do. And people are very, especially British people, we don't want to tell people they're doing really well, we just want to criticise them. So there's a lot <laughs> of people who can see the power and, and what you're creating. So I think um, you should be really pleased about that, Jamie. That's amazing. Thank you, mate. Appreciate right. it. Listen, Cheers. it's been fascinating talking to you. So if people want to contact you, whether it's just to talk about you and chew the card, or you support some small team in some, some oh, north of England? Don't say that. Don't say that. You know we're the champions. <laughs> of, we're the champion. Well, I did a thing the other day because I took my son there for the first time. We're the champions of everywhere. That's the difference, <laughs> isn't it, now? That's, the, that's an incredible, what an accolade that is. It's I know. I know, so, um, I know. But even though it's only for a small amount of time, but I'll take it. So yes, okay, it's beautiful. Uh, you may find me up there, but it's, it's rarer now, obviously, and no one's up there at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, look. So if someone wants to know about your story, even if they want a mortgage, how can yeah, they contact well, you? I mean, who knows? Yeah, I mean, we do more than mortgages now. I do, you know, you do. Actually, you you know, do. Well, that's mortgage. the next podcast. That's the next podcast. Uh, okay, all right, then. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, look, they can, they can contact me at Affinity. I'd love to hear from anybody. My LinkedIn profile's open, you know, by all means, you know, drop me a message. I'm on Facebook, I'm everywhere. So, um, you know, please, please, I'd love, you know, anybody wants anything, any advice I can ever help with. It's, it may not be any good, but um, but I'd, I'd always offer as much help as I ever can. So. I'm sure you can. Jamie, it's been a pleasure. Really right, uh, enjoy, enjoy this conversation. I'm really proud of your journey so far. I'm looking forward to what more you're going to achieve in the future with yourself, yeah. Infinity. Take care. Appreciate it. All right, see ya. Bye. Thank you for listening. To find out more about myself or the Change Your Game Scorecard, you can visit changeyourgamescorecard.com where you can find out how strong your game is and get a full detailed report. Also, if you found this episode useful, please do leave a rating or a review in iTunes to help others discover it too. Until the next time, my name is BJ Slanky.